Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the HTTP messages. In the previous video, we have learned what is an URL and what are the different parts of the URL present. We have seen it. Now, when we are trying to access, when you are trying to make a request to the server, that means a particular URL. Now, what are the messages that we will be trying to send? Let's try to see this one. HTTP messages are how data is exchanged between the server and the client. So this is the thing. This is the HTTP messages are nothing but the data. The data is exchanged between a server and a client. There are two types of messages normally present in the HTTP. One is one type of message is nothing but the request sent by the client to the server to trigger an action on the server. So this is one main, uh, this is one message. The request sent by the client to trigger an action on the server and a response is the answer from the server so this response is also a message and response is it returns back from the server so that means one type of message is sent by the client and one type of message is nothing but sent by the server normally we will call it as whatever the messages sent by the client to the server is called as the request and also whatever the message sent by the server to the client is called as a response request message and a response message the difference between this is the difference between those two request message means it is sent by the client to the server and response message means it is sent by the server to the client so these are the two types of http messages present so now what what does this http message consists of so now we understood the two types of messages that is request message and also a response message. Now we need to know that what type of message is present in the HTTP message. Let's try to see. HTTP messages are composed of textual information encoded in ASCII. So it consists of a simple textual information that is encoded in the ASCII and span over the multiple lines and also it contains multiple lines. In HTTP 1.1 version, or earlier versions of the protocol these messages were openly sent across the connection so that means earlier 1.1 and earlier versions of the http protocol the messages that is nothing but the request message or the response message are openly sent across the connection whereas in http 2 latest one the once human readable message is now divided into frames i will show you that frames how it will be divided providing optimization and also performance improvements so the http in the http2 messages in the http2 version the messages are divided into the frames and it is sent it provides an optimization and also the performance improvement whereas in the http 1.1 or earlier versions the, these messages are openly sent between the connection that is the thing i want to explain normally who will send these HTTP messages? Now you understood that when I am trying to make a request to the server, I need to send a request message. So that is the thing, right? And also the server returns back the response message. Now how can I send this request message? So what is the process of this request message? How can I frame this request message? Normally web developers or webmasters rarely craft these HTTP messages. That means a web developers or webmasters so rarely frame these HTML messages. So then HTTP messages are not framed by web dollars or webmasters means then who will frame these messages? Message themselves. Software, a web browser, proxy or web server performs this action. So that means any software or web browser, proxy or the web server performs this sending of request address or the response messages. They provide HTTP messages through config files for proxies or servers, APIs for browsers or other interfaces. So they provide HTTP messages through config files for proxies. So through config files or through APIs for browsers or other interfaces. So these messages is provided. So this is how normally the HTTP message will consist of. The HTTP message is sent by API, UA activity browser, HTML forms, config file, anything. So you will be having these are the different types which will be sending the HTTP message. Now here the typical HTTP message will be like this. So in HTTP 1, 
and HTTP is two stream, it will be having like this, and the end, end part you will be able to see it. Now you are here, you are having the first line is the put and the path and the URL and the version of the HTTP you are able to see it. And down you are having host connection. So these are the different types of HTTP request address you are having. So at the bottom is the body. So I will try to explain these all things. Whereas in the HTTP 2, so it is composed of frames. So frame type is equal headers, frame type is equal continuation. So like this you will be having. So we will discuss about this one. So this is how typically the HTTP message will be. The HTTP2 binary framing mechanism has been designed to not to require any alteration of the APIs or config files applied. It is broadly transparent to the user. So now we will discuss about this HTTP message how it will get, how it will, how it will contain. Now the first one you have seen it right, a start line. Start line means nothing but I can say this one. So post HTTP 1.1 and here are the response messages and here is the request messages. The first one is the post HTTP 1.1 and here in between this one you are having a small slash. Let's try to see that starting line. A start line describing the request to be implemented or its status of whether successful or failure. This start line is always a single line. So now here it is telling that so the type of a request we are trying to make to whom we are trying to make and also here you will be able to see whether it is a success or the failure it is trying to say that one so and also the start line will always a single line an optional set of HTTP headers specifying the request or describing the body included in the message so these are the optional set of headers and also a body a blank line indicating all meta information for the request has been sent so that means here a blank line is there right so it indicates that these all headers has been successfully sent. An optional body containing data associated with the request like content of an HTML form or the document associated with the response. The presence of the body and its size is specified by the start line and the HTTP headers. The presence of this body. So whether the body is present or not. So it will be mentioned in the by the start line and also the HTTP headers. Let's try to see. So here you will be having the typical HTTP headers here you will be able to see the HTTP headers an empty line and a body at the first one you will be able to see the start line so these are the HTTP headers you will be able to see host user agent accept accept language these are all the request headers and here you will be able to see the response for that one so the server is Apache and the content type these all things whatever the content it is trying to send it. so now let's try to see HTTP request first we will try to see about the HTTP request HTTP requests are messages sent by the client to initiate an action on the server. We have already seen about this one request messages. What is this? HTTP requests are messages that is sent by the client. Their starting line contains three elements. Now when we are trying to send the HTTP request, the starting line we need to consider. So this starting line contains three lines. So three, three lines. So here one, two, three. So these are the three things it is trying to say three elements. So this is the request. So one, two, three. So let's try to see it. There, there afterwards, we'll try to see the response start line also. First, we'll try to see about the request start line. So the first one is you'll be able to see here post, and the second one is slash, and the third one is the HTTP version. Let's try to see first one. First one is an HTTP method, a verb like get, put, or post, or a noun like head or options. These are the different types of options that are available in the first element get put or post or a noun like head or options that describes the action to be performed so it will describe the action what is the action of the HTTP we are performing for example get method so this indicates that a resource should be fetched so that means we need to get an information needs to be fetched or post means the data should be pushed into the server creating or modifying resource or generating a temporary document to send back something like that so whatever the thing it may be so post means we are pushing the data to the server get means we are fetching the data from the server so that is the difference between those two the second one you are able to see right second element slash that is nothing but a request to target so what is the target you are trying to request it is an usually will be an url so we have already learned about the url or the absolute path of the protocol port and a domain and a domain are usually characterized by the request context 
the format of this request target varies between different HTTP methods. So let's try to see that one. First of all, here I have shown you some of the methods. So here post slash we have given, and here get background dot png or head test dot html question mark query is equal to Alibaba something like that or options any page dot html. So this can be any absolute path. So an, an absolute path ultimately followed by a question mark and query string. This is the most common form known as the origin form and is used with get post head and options method. A complete URL known as the absolute form. It is mostly used with get request when connected to a proxy. Get HTTP google.com something like this like this you will be having. The authority component of a URL consisting of the domain name and optionally the port is normally used with the connect. So this is the action and normally with the port and all those things if you want to mention we need to use with the connect. Normally you will be using. The, and the last one so and the third element you will be able to see right and the third element HTTP 1.1. So this HTTP version which defines the structure of the remaining message acting as an indicator of the expected version to use for the response. So the last HTTP version we are trying to send. So this indicates the type the rest the remaining message the structure of the remaining message how it would look like. So we are trying to explain it and also the response also we are trying to expect in that same version only. So that is why we are trying we are keeping this HTTP version. So overall we have learned what is a, what is there present in the start line. So that is nothing but here post that is nothing but action whether it can be a get post put head options so like this you can have so many things and here you'll be having an url absolute url or something like that query parameter url anything and the last one is the http version so this is the first starting line the next video what we'll try to see is we'll try to see the remaining messages what are the different types of messages present in the request headers let's try to see hope you understood about this one so here you also you have try i'm trying to explain you that the start line and the HTTP address, the start line and the HTTP address of the HTTP message are collectively called as the head of the request, whereas its body is known, whereas its payload is known as the body. So these all combining with the start line and the headers, it is called as an HTTP head of the message, and this data is payload is called as the data or body. So this is all about the HTTP messages. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, Please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.